Continuing on with the top 10 best weapon series for PvE, today we have Dark Souls 1, which is a game that I've been playing for 10 years and I've actually never made a top 10 best weapons list. So here we are making one right now. Now Dark Souls 1 doesn't really have that many weapons to begin with, but trying to condense it to a top 10 was very annoying. There's plenty of really good stuff in this game. But definitely don't forget to like and subscribe and do let me know what your opinions are down in the comments below. But yeah, without the way, let's just get into it. Number 10, we have the Murakumo, which this is a curved greatsword, and this weapon class is just absolutely amazing. You get very nice range, good damage, good stagger potential, and pretty quick movesets at that as well. Now, typically the things that curved greatswords kind of lack would be variety in moveset, but it doesn't mean that the moveset isn't good because with the Murakumo, you do get some nice diagonal swipes with a light attack combo. The initial and first light attack that you do get is pretty slow, but the follow-up actually comes out extremely quick. The heavy attacks are also really solid. The two-handed heavy attack is a nice downward chop that actually can flatten enemies to the ground. And the one-handed heavy attack does serve as a nice horizontal swipe, which obviously makes it really good at crowd control and hitting multiple enemies. But the Murakumo is just going to be the best in class because it does get very high base damage and it gets an A scaling in dexterity. So going all into that dexterity stat can actually result in very high damage. Now, the only downside that I could probably say about the Murakumo is that it does get a 28 strength requirement and only get an E scaling in strength. So there are going to be a bunch of wasted stats put in there. But the weapon is so easy to use and you can output a lot of damage. So I definitely recommend paying a trip to Shiva the Deceased and picking yourself up a Murakumo. Number nine, we have the Grades Club, which is probably the best of all the big bonking Great Hammer type of weapons. Now, typically that weapon class can be kind of a hit or miss. They obviously do very high damage in one hit, but they tend to have very slow movesets and weigh a whole bunch to where you're always gonna have to spec into a lot of endurance or probably wear the Havel's Ring as well. But with the Great Club, but not only does it actually get some of the most range and the most base damage in the entire weapon class, but it also only weighs 12 units, which is obviously like way less than some of the other Great Hammers in the game. And it honestly weighs just as much as the Murakumo, which we talked about. It also gets the exact same strength requirement at only 28 strength. And with the A scaling that it does get, you can just go all into that strength stat, don't have to worry about dexterity at all, and you can just output so much damage. But to talk about the moveset of the Great Club, it's light attack combos, it's nothing but a bunch of downward bonks. It's rolling attack is extremely good to get a nice horizontal spread, and with how much damage you actually can output, you can like one-shot a whole bunch of smaller types of enemies. And as for its heavy attack, it's just a bigger downward bonk, which actually does flatten enemies at the ground. So yeah, it's probably not going to get the most amount of damage compared to some of the other Great Hammers, but it gets pretty damn close to it and for weighing a lot less and having more range. So yeah, this is definitely going to be a top turn up in this game. Number eight, we have the Iato. Now this is a Katana, of which Katanas are just amazing in like every single game and Dark Souls 1 is obviously no exception. Every single Katana in this game is just really good. Chaos Blade, Washing Pole, and the Uchi Katana, they're all basically in the exact same tier. A lot of people might put the Chaos Blade higher on the list, but you actually can get more damage with the Iato and the Uchi Katana because you actually can buff them and you get better scalings. You get A scalings in dexterity compared to the B scaling that the Chaos Blade gets. Even if you take into account the humanity bonus, the Uchi Katana and the Iato can still add damage it. And without having to take away health and having a better moveset, which is the reason why I actually went with the Iato over the Uchi Katana, even though the Uchi does get a little bit more damage, the Iato just gets the better heavy attack because typically with katanas, you only really get vertical swipes at poking attacks, but the Iato with the heavy actually does introduce a horizontal swipe, which is really good at hitting multiple enemies at once. And with the two-handed heavy attack, it actually does have a really solid lunge as well. You can get both these weapons very early on in the game, so you can go either way, but the heavy attack that the Iato gets is definitely worth the trade-off of that little bit of damage. But yeah, katanas in general are just always going to be really easy to use because they have very nice range, quick movesets. They also get that inherent bleed, but typically in this game, they're probably going to be a bit outclassed by something like curve swords because they tend to be a lot quicker which they result in much higher dps and actually better bleed proccing but yeah you can't go wrong with the iato Number seven, the Claymore, just the good old reliable in every single video game. And Dark Souls 1 is probably the best version of the Claymore. You get some of the highest base damage out of all the great swords. Very low requirements, you can get it very early on in the game, doesn't weigh that much. And it just gets the best moveset because you have access to the one-handed poke attacks. Using that heavy attack just makes you lunge forward a whole bunch. You can cover so much distance and actually get a very nice amount of damage off. And obviously paired alongside the Leo Ring, you can just get even more damage. Because counter attacks are just stupid in this game because they can just result in like more than twice as much damage sometimes. So yeah, if you're really not sure as to what weapon you actually want to use in Dark Souls 1, because it's good speeds, good damage, good range, good moveset, you can buff it, it doesn't weigh that much, you, you can't really go wrong. Number six, we have the Painting Guardian Sword, which this bad boy has the highest DPS in the entire game. It's a curved sword of which they just have really fast light attack speeds. I mean, like almost as fast as a dagger, really. But they get like 10 times as much damage and all get passive bleed too. But the Painting Guardian Sword is probably going to be the best in class due to its really good base damage and the A scaling it gets in dexterity. Once you get to about 30 to 40 dex, it's just going to outclass all the other curved swords in terms of damage. Even if you actually want to pair it with an elemental infusion, having its enchanted infuse will actually give you an S scaling and intelligence 
Guardians. Now the Painting Guardian Sword also does get a unique heavy attack as well. Some cool little like pirouette spinning attack that actually can be comboed into regular light attacks, which it can be pretty cool, but I recommend just spamming R1 the entire time. Now the way I'm talking about it might seem like it should be like top three, but the reason why it's gonna get a bit lower on a top 10 list, it has a very short range. Like the range is very similar to a dagger really. So if the range is like a really big deal to you and you notice that you're missing a whole bunch of attacks, which can be very possible, I recommend just picking up the falchion instead. Obviously it's not gonna get as much damage and it does weigh a little bit more, but that extra range that you do get with the falchion might make it seem a lot less frustrating. And also the painting guardian sword has a very stupidly low drop rate, 2% off the painting guardians and Analondo. So it's not like it's the easiest thing to acquire. But with how insane curve swords are with their slashing type damage which is like almost everything in the entire game is weak to slashing damage and how fast those light attacks come out the painting guardian sword is definitely one of the best weapons in the game Number five, we have the Gargoyle's Halberds. Now, Halberds are like the best weapon class in the entire game. You can't go wrong with any single Halberd. You can honestly put every single Halberd on this top 10 list and call it a day. But for the sake of actually having a little bit of variety on this list, we're not going to do that. But yeah, things like the regular Halberd, the Giant's Halberd, Lucerne, all of these are like basically just as good. But the reason I'm going to pick the Gargoyle's Halberd above all of those other ones is that you can just get the most amount of damage. That has an incredible base damage. The fact that it actually can be infused, which you definitely want to commit to go with like with an elemental infusion, whether it be like lightning or fire infused because the gargoyles habit does get some pretty poor scalings so going into one of these elemental infusions is probably going to be best because it just results in such high amounts of damage pole arms are just incredibly good especially when you hit with that sweet spot damage that is perform really well now the lucerne actually might out damage the gargoyles habit if you take into account the thrusting damage that it does get but the reason why i'm going to prefer the gargoyles is because it just gets the better moveset especially with those heavy attacks which is probably going to be the best part about it the spin to win you can't go wrong with the double spin to win it's probably not going to be the best thing in terms of boss dps but when you get surrounded by a bunch of enemies which can happen a whole bunch you can just clear out the entire room with this is one attack right here but yes this won't be the last halberd you end up seeing on this list Number four, we have the Boulder Side Swag. This bad boy is just going to be one of the best weapons in the entire game purely because of its heavy attack. Now, it's a straight sword, which straight swords tend to be outclassed by other types of weapons like curved swords and katanas due to the fact of them doing slashing damage, having bleed, and potentially just having more range or just faster movesets. But the Boulder Side Sword is an exception because its heavy attacks is just nothing but pokes. Every single one. The follow-up heavy attack is a poke. The one-handed, two-handed, they're just all pokes, and they have amazing range and do a lot of damage because this bad boy just gets a very good dexterity based scaling even gets a decent strength scaling too so having a quality based is actually going to be pretty viable but honestly you can just spend the entire game just spamming the heavy attack and you'll be perfectly fine pair it alongside the leo ring and the counter attack damage will be carrying you from start to finish because counter attack damage is just beyond stupid you just do so much damage now typically when you're spamming heavy attacks you're going to be like running out of stamina really quickly but the boulder side sword doesn't really consume much stamina with its heavy attacks so like the heavy attack spam is actually a very viable strategy now obviously using the light attacks is definitely going to be necessary because poking attacks can actually miss certain types of enemies or if you actually want to hit multiple enemies at once the one-handed light attack combo can do it perfectly fine the two-handed light attack combo is vertical swipes so you basically just get everything that you want in terms of variety of moveset you get good range you get good damage it's just really good there's like nothing really bad i could say about it outside of the fact that you have to farm for it because the drop rate is incredibly low but once you do finish the stupid farm that is behind this weapon you've instantly attained one of the best weapons in dark souls 1 Number three, we have the Black Knight weapons. I'm just going to cop out and put all of them on the list because you can easily put every single one of these in the top 10, but for the sake of having variety on the list and just mentioning different weapons, we're going to put all of these together. Now, the reason why all the Black Knight weapons are just really good because they get very high base damage. They can be upgraded with Twinkling Tide Knight, which is probably like easier to come by in some cases. They all get 20% bonus damage to demons. All of these actually get very good stagger potential, and most of these weapons actually get more stagger damage than some of the other weapons in their own class. And they all actually get very unique heavy attacks too. Some for the better and some for worse. Something like the Black Knight Great Axe actually gets a very good heavy attack compared to the other types of Great Axes. But something like the Black Knight Halberd heavy attack is just kind of be like shit compared to some of the other Halberd heavy attacks. Now, a lot of people will probably end up putting like these Black Knight weapons as like the best in the entire game, but they still have their own downsides. One, they tend to have pretty poor scalings. None of them really get like an A scaling in a particular stat. And then something like the Black Knight Halberd and the Black Knight Sword only get C or D scalings. And combined with the fact that you actually can't buff any of these things, your damage potential is definitely limited. Once you get to like later in the game, or definitely in new game plus, you're going to notice very severe damage fall off. And another thing about these weapons, they actually tend to weigh a lot more than some other weapons in their own class and actually have higher requirements, which is not that big of a deal, especially with the fact that you're just doing amazing damage still. And it definitely is worth that stat investment. But potentially the worst thing about these weapons is that you have to get them off enemies that don't really respawn. So you're basically just going to pray and hopefully they actually do get a drop and get lucky. Otherwise, you're just going to be screwed for like the majority of your playthrough until you get towards the end of the game. Now, if I actually were to rank these Black Knight Swords, I probably put the Black Knight Great Axe at number one 
A lot of people will probably end up considering this one to be the best one if the Black Knight Gredax were actually more accessible earlier in the game, but you can't really consistently get the Black Knight Gredax until like right at the end, so a lot of people don't really use it much. I probably put the Black Knight Halberd at number two, the Black Knight Sword at number three, and then the Black Knight Greatsword at the bottom at number four. Doesn't mean any of these are bad, they're still all really amazing, and picking any of these up and getting a really lucky drop could result in you just having a very good experience throughout the game. Number two, the Zwei Handor. Every single time that I go like a little bit without using this weapon, I always tend to think like, was it really that good? Is it just a nostalgia part of my brain just thinking that it was actually as good as it was? And then you pick it up and use it again. And then you realize, yes, it actually is that good. This thing is a stupid. This thing gets some of the best range in the entire game, gets ridiculous damage, ridiculous stagger potential. This thing only weighs 10 units. Like how are you only gonna weigh 10 units and go that far and have that much stagger damage. Like literally there's great swords in this game that weigh more than this shit. You don't even get that high of a requirements, only 24 strength and 10 dexterity. You get a pretty decent quality scaling. Your light attacks can clear out entire rooms because it has that much range and actually swings that far across. The heavy attacks can just pancake enemies to the ground. Your rolling attacks literally get pokes, which obviously gonna do thrusting damage. And the best thing about it, you literally get it right at the beginning. You get it at Firelink Shrine. So how are you gonna pick this up right at the beginning and it's gonna be one of the best weapons in the entire game, carry you from start to finish. And for me, it's always going to be one of the most badass swords in the entire game. My first game was Dark Souls 1. I remember picking up this weapon and thinking to myself, what the fuck did I get into? What the hell is this game? This weapon is fucking huge. But yeah, there's like nothing bad I can say about this Y-Hander. Like there's nothing bad about it. Number one, the Great Scythe. Now, I obviously mentioned this in one of my previous videos talking about how it's the best weapon in Dark Souls 1 and people had the audacity to tell me I was wrong and that the Black Knight Halberd was better. What? If you want to know why this is better than the Black Knight Halberd, I can tell you. Like, if this is like 10 years ago before the Black Knight Halberd got nerfed, okay, fine. But not in this day and age, absolutely not. Starting off with the fact this thing has half the requirements, weighs half as much. You get the much better moveset because you get good lunges with the heavy and the running attack. You get much more damage because you actually can infuse and buff this weapon. And this thing actually gets decent scalings unlike the Black Knight Halberd. So your damage and your DPS can just be way higher with this thing. It also gets bleed, which against certain types of enemies, it just might result in even more damage. It also consumes way less stamina too. And you're actually guaranteed to grab this thing right at the beginning. You can go straight to the catacombs, pick it up with a corpse. You don't have to worry about good RNG or random drops. You don't need much strength, dexterity, or endurance at all. You can just pick it up. You have amazing range, you get amazing damage. You're just going to be perfectly fine. Now, the only things that the Black Knight Halberd actually does do better than the Great Scythe is it actually does do better stagger damage. So I actually can stagger enemies a little bit better. And obviously when you're fighting demons, the Black Knight Halberd will probably end up out damaging it as well. But in almost every single other instance, the Great Scythe is just going to be amazing. The light attack combos is just nothing but quick downward swipes, which yes, is it's going to be a bunch of vertical chops, but being they're actually really quick, your DPS is going to be really good. And if you actually do want horizontal swipes, that's when you actually can use the heavy attack or the running attack because both of them are just very quick lunging attacks that can hit multiple enemies at once and actually can do some very nice damage. The fact that you can actually get this much range and this much damage for a weapon that only gets a 14 strength and dexterity requirement and only weighs five units. Like there are straight swords in the game that weigh just as much as this. So yes, the Great Scythe is going to be the best weapon in Dark Souls 1. Anyway, that is the list. Just let me know what your opinions are down in the comments below. And definitely do like and subscribe because the next video will end up being the best Dark Souls 2 weapons. Anyway, catch you guys around. Bye.